Dawn is the new comic that we're working on here at Hamster Bomb Studios, and it's another ongoing, like R. And if you've come across this video one way or another, you're more than likely interested in figuring out what it's about. So I'm intending on making a short little video synopsis for you guys right here. It's probably best to start by describing Dawn as a combination of two different ideas I had for comics that both just kind of got put on the back burner for a while, and I never decided to do anything with them until I had the idea to combine them. And the first idea is about dragons and dragon mythology. I've been reading a bunch of dragon mythology. I've got a couple books on them, I've been reading up on them, and I, I found the stories really interesting, and I like dragons, and I like drawing them, and I wanted to find a way to use that in a comic, but I couldn't figure out how or what reason to do it. And my other idea was more of a psychological character kind of stance. And how the psychology of it works is a little complicated. So I'm just going to jump right in and say that this main character we're talking about here is Don. D-O-N, as in short for Donald, not Don of the title, D-A-W-N. Dawn is a young adult currently being cared for at the Binkley Institute in Southern Sinners Cove, a fictional mental institution where they take care of people with strange or unusual... Uh, fictional disabilities that all concern their mind and basically they're living here as they're being studied as the doctors are trying to understand how they live their lives and if they can implement this in ways to help other people and throughout this whole first issue we're really spending a lot of time trying to understand how Don's mind works and becoming comfortable with how he lives his life now the best way to describe how Don's mind works is through uh, giving you an example of a deja vu moment. Say you walk into a room and uh, you get a weird deja vu moment as if uh, you've been here before. Well, when that happens to Dawn, he doesn't just feel that, he does. But what happens is, as he feels it, he's actually transported to the point in his life where he's feeling that, say, if he was walking into that room 20 years ago or 20 years in the future. So because of this, Don lives his life out of order as his mind travels around its own memory banks trying to make sense of what's going on around him. And by his own memories and what he uncovers in his life and how he's exploring, it actually takes him to different points in his life that he can't really control. It's a lot to take in at once, but like I said, the entire first issue is really getting you comfortable with that idea. As we jump around from future to the past, we're actually following Dawn the entire time, uncovering the whole narrative of the first story. And as the whole comic progresses, we use Dawn as a conduit that helps us understand the story as it's evolving. We'll understand things in the future better after we've jumped to the past and learned something about those people. Or, Don in the story might use certain things that he's found in the past to try and help him in the future, even though in the future he might not know that he's done those things in the past yet because he hasn't lived his life in the correct order. For example, there's a point where Don is locked in a room and he can't find the way out. And so what he has to do is eventually find a point where he's transported back in time before he's locked in that room and hide the keys somewhere in the room so that he's able to get out once he's transported back into that room. Now, the reason that this would work is because the whole time he was in that room, he hadn't yet experienced him putting the keys in the room hidden under the floorboard. He wouldn't have known they were there until he's transported back, and suddenly he's able to open that door because he's taken to the correct point in time in his life to do so. Alright, so where am I going with all this? Well, remember that dragon mythology stuff I was telling you about earlier? Well, in the future of the Island of Sinner's Cove, Dawn, as well as the rest of the crew in Binkley Institute, are attacked by dragons. At first, they're smaller snakes and amphitheaters and things that are at least a little bit manageable, but eventually, different dragons that are referencing different stories of mythology start appearing, and their stories are kind of reworked into one giant narrative through Dawn's story, as he's either trying to save his friends or correct things and try and right the wrongs that have happened in the past. But who's actually going to believe this kid who's in a mental institution who says he's experienced the future and the world is being destroyed by dragons? I mean, really? You really start narrowing down the few characters who actually believe Dawn and are trying to help him and understand what's going to happen in the future to protect themselves and everybody else, and then there's the rest of the crew who kind of just thinks he's nuts. And it's usually those people who Dawn really needs them to do something really important in the future, and he can't quite get them to understand what he's saying is the truth. So 
it's uh, taking a whole lot of problems with uh, Don trying to get the credibility he needs so that people understand him, and Don eventually becoming the leader of the group in the future, considering how he knows the most about it now, trying to protect these people and keep them safe, because obviously things will go very, very wrong in a world that is completely destroyed because of a dragon apocalypse. Right in this first issue, we're already going to have one character get kidnapped, who's basically going to be the whole driving point of the crew in the future, trying to get this person back. And of course, as the series progresses, we're going to be introduced to more characters from Binkley who have different types of fictional mental disorders. Some of them are normal disorders that have been taken to a fictional level where they are adding different conflicts to the group. Some of them will help and hinder the group. We'll also be introduced to different types of dragon mythology that is uh, being pulled into a more modern sense that is also retelling its own story in Dawn, but also adding to a larger whole that is the entire narrative of this comic series so that's basically in a nutshell what the comic's about and where it's heading so i'm really glad to see that this comic is out so soon i had a feeling that it would be a just let the lens a script for a few years but uh john ended up doing a really great job of digitally painting this comic completely by himself uh he in turn did all of the layouts and art i did the story and the lettering. Or as I prefer to say it, I did the words and John did the pictures. So if you guys are interested in picking up a copy of Dawn or just seeing updates on how far we are on the comic, you can check out our website, which is www.hamsterbomb.com. From there, you can see updates on what conventions we might be going to. It's best to buy the comics from us. And you can also now buy the comics online on hamsterbomb.com. There is a store tab where it will basically calculate a bunch of different uh, either comics or merchandise we have together in one order to combine the shipping. Our local convention is Cincy Comic Con. We're local to Cincinnati, so any conventions that you guys would like to see us in that are close enough to that area, you can shoot us an email or a message on the website and we'll see what we can do about attending that convention. Currently, there is no way to buy Dawn digitally, but I am doing my best to put it on Comixology up with R, our other comic. So I'm going to get back to you guys with more information on that. If I do get it up there finally, I'll tell you guys down in the comments section. And of course, I'm going to provide all the links that I just said before down in there. So that's all the information I got for you on Dawn. I don't want to give away too much. It's too much fun of a book to ruin. So hope you guys are interested. Hope to see you guys at a convention. But for now, that's all I got for you. So I'll see you guys later.